TEDx Orange Coast and I am back here with Laura Lee and she is one of our TEDx speakers today. She is the Chief Innovation Operating Officer at Continuum. She also was named a Master of Innovation by Business Week in 2006. And I'm also interested in the fact that she was the head of Harley Davidson's Enthusiast Services Division and Laura built a new $80 million operation that monetized brand building experiences incubated new businesses and delivered 20% operating margin while attracting new female minority and under 35 customers. I have to ask, Yes. working for Harley Davidson, yes. how cool of a job is that? Uh, it, it was awesome. So I was at Harley 15 years. I went there originally to build the international business and then did a bunch of internal startups and ran a division, as you mentioned. Um, and you know we worked hard and we delivered great business results. The company went from under a billion to over six billion, but there was also a lot of fun along the way. So yeah. I got to ride with the Sultan of Johor, and okay. I got to hang out with rockabilly bikers in Japan and tattoo artists in Amsterdam and a whole bunch of other things. I so can imagine. <laughs> it was good fun, imagine. good fun. I mean, what a, what, a, what a fun company to work for. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it, and they seem to be, while they're old school would be the term I would use, mm -hmm. they seem to be you know, somewhat innovative. Um, would that be an accurate statement? Yeah, I think, um, a bunch of us who joined at that time in the early 90s were part of a wave that, that brought some outside thinking and so it was a really nice mix of tradition and innovation. Right. And um, what made it work was that we all aligned around putting the customer first. And so when you put the customer at the core, whether you're old school or you're new blood coming in, you know, you have a common ground that you're focused on. And that's how I think they've survived as long as they Absolutely. have, right? Yeah. Right. So tell me about Continuum. So Continuum is a design and innovation firm. We partner with clients to uh, develop new businesses, products and services that grow while making people's lives better. And so that could be like creating the Swiffer. It could be working with the Global Spanish Bank to design the ideal banking experience of the year 2020. Okay. It could be creating a new food experience for a regional pizza chain in the Northeast. Okay. Um, it could be innovating um, Medicare insurance. It could be creating a very small wearable insulin pump to improve the lives of kids with diabetes. Okay, so you really do have a wide portfolio. Very broad, yeah. We are 30-year-old, um, privately held, and have five offices around the world, Boston, LA, Shanghai, Seoul, and Milan. Wow, yeah. So, so, so where do you see the state of innovation uh, in the world today? I mean, we, we do have some interesting things going on. There are some people who claim, for example, Moore's Law is slowing down. Do you mm. see that to be true? I, I can't comment on that. Technology innovation really isn't my forte. Our, ours is much more human-centered okay. innovation. So, so that's headed in two ways. One was mentioned earlier, um, the experience of everything. Right? Everything becoming about an experience that has uh, multiple touch points, including multiple digital touch points. And so that's food is becoming an experience, shopping, retail is becoming an experience. Um, but on the other uh, end of the spectrum, uh, we see a lot of work in what I would call humanizing complex systems. So these are all the systems that are um, inherently intangible, banking, financial services, yeah. where features have crept in and they never get purged out because it doesn't cost a lot of money to build them. But it right. makes for a terrible experience for the customer and for the people inside the company. And it's entirely unnecessary. Exactly. And when you can purge out those unnecessary features, you actually reduce cost and improve the experience. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think a lot about that. I mean, you don't realize that institutionalized features mm -hmm. really are sort of an obnoxious just because and, totally and you don't realize that by removing them it actually would improve someone's life exactly um, and, and and the problem is the people in the system are trapped in the system and the only way to get it right is to put the user at the core put the customer at the core because the customer trumps all yeah right? yeah, yeah yeah that's a really good point so um, is this your first TEDx it is so what was the experience like for you 
It was really fun. Um, it, you know, well organized event. Um, a lot of passion in the people putting on the event, all the volunteers and all the staff. So that's been really yeah. cool to experience. It, you know, that makes a difference uh, for a speaker when well, you feel course. that energy. And then, of course, the other speakers have been um, eclectic and varied, but all very proficient and talented in their own ways. And so the, there's just a super collective energy that I, I think builds upon itself. So it's been a great experience. So as a woman, um, you've been very successful in, in, in an innovative business. For those young girls that are thinking about what they might be doing with their lives, what would you have to tell them you know, as they're thinking about what they might do with their lives? I think first and foremost is um, advice I got from my elementary school principal when I was graduating long ago. You know, this above all things to thine own self be true. So, you know, don't worry about the world, what the world wants you to be. Don't worry about what you think you should do. Don't worry about the roadmap you think you're supposed to follow because it's all going to change, you know, three times before you even grow up. So. Take the time to explore a lot of different interests and find out what really, you know, fires your passion and brings you joy. And then, you know, go out and find other people who have made a career out of doing something that relates and, you know, get mentorship and, and get advice and um, figure out how to make your own path that's really going to make you happy as well as successful. I want to reiterate the mentorship thing because I can't say enough about how little, one, the the children of our society seek out mentorship and mm -hmm. to the adults provide mentorship. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that we do a shameful job as, as mm -hmm. a society, Americans, providing mentorship to our kids and kids are not taught to seek it out. It's right. been incredibly powerful for me mm -hmm. to have mentors um, and I highly recommend it. So I'm glad that you raised that. It's something yeah. that hasn't been raised a lot today um, and I'm glad that you did. So I, I think thank that's you. terrific. So thank you so much for taking the time. My pleasure. Congratulations thank on you. your TEDx um, and uh, thanks for talking with me. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Fantastic.